Okay, AK Smee is our guest this week on the Craving Consciousness Podcast, and I'm really excited. We haven't met in person, but we literally just fired up this Zoom, and I see her. Some of you guys will see on the YouTube, because I do put this on YouTube, but those of you guys that are just listening, like as soon as I open up the Zoom, I'm like, oh my God, you're a star being. And she's like, what do you mean? And it's like all over her. So like, <laughs> I read DNA imprints, and so like we're not we're not just from here you know what I mean we 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 live all our multiple lives um all at once right but we have these like imprints that overlap so when I read somebody's DNA imprint it usually helps them kind of like find their purpose or make more sense to them about how they feel about being here kind of like maybe an astrology reading right but I'm like oh my gosh she looks so Palladian to me she's like I've never heard of that but like um it's her eyebrows, her facial structure. She's got like the neat, cool purple underneath, you know? So she's like um, expressing her alien self, I guess, if you will. Uh, and so then you were saying, okay, because tell tell the audience, because we were chatting, I was like, oh, I should have recorded this. That uh, I'm like, do you feel like different? Like you don't belong here. And you were talking about communication. Say that part again, what you do. Yeah, so I am like super neurodivergent in the way that I communicate and the way that I just operate and think. I'm I'm not on like the autistic spectrum at all, but I definitely know that I process things differently than other people because I'll say things and people will be like, oh, what? And I think even as a kid, the way that I would express myself, it's a little bit more widely accepted now because we are so therapy focused and things like that. But as a kid, even... I think sometimes people looked at me like I had six heads because they're like, what are you talking about? And you're like, but it like makes sense. I swear it makes sense. <laughs> so yeah, I think there's always been a little bit of a disconnect on that, which is ironic in that I've now written a communication program that helps people communicate in that very kind of same way that creates more clarity. So I love that you do this. I'm so excited to have you on the podcast because I am a super nerd because I'm psychic medium, right? And I've done so many readings and it really goes into human behavior. Um, mm -hmm. And it really goes into communication and the words that we use and the way we use them. I would love to know, how did you get into this communication field? Uh, so I am a therapist. That's my initial background. I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor. So I do therapy. And I kind of just started developing this over the last now over two years where I started working with people who were, ha who were having difficulties in their marriages, their relationships and dating um, and just started playing with different strategies. Also going through my own divorce over the last couple of years as well and, and taking that step back and thinking, what happened? How did we start here and end in this completely other place? Like what happened in the middle of all of that, that like the communication in the end was just impossible. So I started really picking that apart and examining what it was and um, had three couples who initially started with me just as my guinea pigs that were like, yeah, sure, we'll try your strategies. We'll play, we'll do whatever. Um, two of them were just, they were ready to call divorce attorneys. They were done. And now over two years later, using these strategies and using these things that I've developed, um, they're all thriving and having great connection and great bonding and just feel like they've reset their whole relationship. So um, kind of just accidentally fell into it. It started growing into this thing. My partner at one point was like, this is amazing. You should, why, do, why are you not like writing this down and owning this? And I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> so, so I did. So I wrote it down and now I own it. <laughs> this is so freaking cool. So tell us about it, this course. Is it in person? It's an online. Tell us. Yeah, so I do, I do all my therapy and all my coaching online. Um, the, the program is called the Foundational Conversation Method. And basically, I work with individuals and couples to reset the way that they communicate with each other. And we start that really with looking at their wants and needs. And do they align? If you're single, what are your wants and needs? So when you go into those dates and you go into those communications, those first conversations when we're texting through apps and we're texting each other and doing whatever, really starting to talk about what are our wants and needs and finding out does this person's wants and needs align with mine or are they workable with mine? Because if they're not, it doesn't matter what that passion is. It doesn't matter what that connection is. In the case of a marriage or a relationship, it doesn't matter what that history is. If your wants and needs aren't workable together, you're not going to work. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just not going to work. Can you so, give an example of somebody's wants and needs? Yeah. So I actually have eight of them. 
that I coach people through. And it's a good example I like to use is on the financial pie. If your finances, you don't have the same idea of what your spending habits are. You don't have the same idea of what your lifestyle is. If you want that Maserati lifestyle and your partner doesn't, how does that work? Are you like, dope, I'll make all the money, I'll buy the Maseratis, you go do whatever you want to do? Or are you looking for a power couple situation and you want that par partner to also be working for that Maserati lifestyle? If that doesn't align, we know that financials are the number one reason people get divorced. Oh, really? Yeah, because people, everyone wants to think it's infidelity, but it's actually financials because people don't align. They don't, they don't talk about what their spending habits are ahead of time. They don't set up an expectation with each other. They get frustrated with each other for not wanting and operating in the same ways. And then in the end, and then a lot of times too, we get people who stay in relationships because of their financials too. They stay because they're afraid to leave and not yes. have that for that financial too. So really having that understanding and expectation of each other going in is a really important thing along with what are your ideas on marriage? What are your ideas on kids? What are your ideas? Do, does it matter to you if somebody politically and religiously aligns with you? Nobody feels comfortable talking about it, but we have to talk about sex and intimacy with our partners. Yeah. What does that look like for you? What do you like? What don't you like? How many times a week do you like to do anything sexual or anything intimate. Are Seriously? you snuggling on the couch? Yeah. Are you not? These are massive things that people get very unhappy about because our sex lives and our libido ebbs and flows. And if the, that doesn't work together and you can't communicate about that together, that causes a lot of frustration. I think that's a big one. Like for me, because I have a, a new boyfriend with, we've been together about a year solid. And that, like, I literally, because I'm really big on conscious relationships because of all the readings that I've done and the human behavior studies that I've done through being like the psychic development and stuff. Um, so literally I sat him down. <laughs> I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, I need sex four times a week. Yeah. Yeah. And my, at that time, in the very beginning, I was on the apps. That's the first time ever. And I was like, have a, a couple guys that I was like hooking up with, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so he, I was like, so I need, I'm dating other people. I let him know. I literally straight up was like, I'm yeah. dating other people. And then he came over on one day and he's like, I'm pretty sure I could do the four times. A week. <laughs> and then bless his heart. Doesn't, didn't really understand the whole clitoris situation. So, but at least I met that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, okay. He really got a lesson from you. <laughs> <laughs> and a kissing lesson too. I'm like, Kissing is my love language and this is not going to fly. So, I mean, I really had to put him to, to the test at the beginning because it's really a foundational thing. It's a foundation. Yeah. If you don't, if you have a rocky ass foundation, it's not going it to go work. anywhere. And it's like me as a conscious woman, why would I, why would I pretend Yeah. that I'm happy when I'm not, you know, really communication yeah. is like literally what you're saying. What is it called? The foundational Foundational conversation method. Conversation it's method. Entirely based on that, studying your foundation right from the get-go, making sure that you and that person align so that you can build that house and keep building upon it. And also to know too, when it's time with your partner in the case of long-term relationships and marriages, we grow and change. The house that we build in the beginning of our relationship, much like our starter home when we are, you know, kind of growing into adulthood we outgrow that at some point. So we need to know when do we like dismantle our house and bring it back down and relay our foundation and start rebuilding again. Wow. That can be really, especially for marriages, that can be a really difficult conversation to have because what is the risk in that? Yeah. That it's no longer aligned. So uh, I have a late husband that passed away two and a half years ago. And we always had this joke. Uh, we, we were together 22 years. Wow. And so you can imagine how much our lives changed in that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but we had this joke because I think it was like on a Seinfeld show or something. And, and uh, the people lived way up high, you know, on a high rise, but there was like no elevator. So, so in the show, in order to break up, they would have to like pack up all their dishes and carry them all the way down the stairs. And that sounds like a lot of work. So we always would joke when we get in a big fight we would be like, is it worth packing up the dishes? Yeah. <laughs> because so we'd yeah. be like, that's a lot of work too, the breakup. Yeah. So that's how we would make up. But you know what you're saying too about the house, re remodeling that house, like, right? Because 
I worked in corporate America when we first got together and he, he had kind of a corporate job too. And then we ended up moving across the country and ended up so fucking broke, right? Food pantry broke, food yeah. pantry broke, like Salvation Army broke. Uh, so we had to grow through that. Right. And then all of a sudden abundance coming and then me having my spiritual awakening. And he thought I lost my mind. He thought he was ready to take me to the loony bin. I'm not kidding. So I became a completely different person. So yeah, navigating those types of changes and supporting that person. And is it, is it worth packing up the dishes yeah. or is it worth yeah. like shifting and growing together? And can you, cause sometimes the reality is you're just not going to be able to grow together. Yeah. The wants and needs are too different at this point and that's okay. But the aim of that too is getting to a point where you can have that conversation and be able to walk away from each other without the anger, without the need to hurt each other further. It's going to hurt. <laughs> Anytime you separate from someone, whether it's a friend, a family member, a spouse, a partner, it's going to hurt. But can you do that in a way that maintains respect to each other and maintains courtesy to each other and care to each other? Or do we get into these ugly years long angry divorces and separations and now we're talking bad about each other and creating other issues especially when there's kids involved and they're hearing all of this too you know it's it's setting up that communication with each other so the trust and the care and the respect are there from the very beginning so even when you get to the end no matter how disappointing it is no matter how hurtful it is you can end that in a way that works for both of you yeah I forgot it, I had somebody on the podcast like years ago and she was talking about conscious uncoupling. Yeah. What's yeah. called uncoupling. And it's like an actual process. Yeah. Where you work spiritual you way. together. Yeah. You do that together. You realize that look, this this isn't serving either of us anymore. We can't grow in a positive direction together anymore. So we need to, we need to figure out the best way to separate this. Yeah. That is so freaking cool. So your program is great for like people that are just now getting in relationship too, right? Yeah. It's for singles who are looking for a partner and establishing, how do I have those conversations with someone? How do I get myself in a position where I find out early on within those first two, three dates, whether or not we have enough to continue going forward, as opposed to waiting six, eight, 18 months down the road and all of a sudden we're emotionally invested we think we're in love we think all of these things and now we're finding out we don't actually work so then we get into that cycle of now we're trying to make things work and now we're manipulating each other and creating resentments instead of just having those conversations in the very beginning to find out if it's even going to work in the long run passion yeah. and love are great but if you don't have those wants and needs it implodes yeah that is really interesting. So, so financial and the sex, what else did you say? You had the, so, um, it's financial marriage, kids, intimacy, politics and religion, um, career, um, and then your family involvement and your friend involvement. Cause those are other things that people don't want to talk about too. What is your expectations of your friends and your family? in the relationship. Do you tell your friends everything that happens in your relationship or do you maintain a level of privacy? Does your mother-in-law come over every day unannounced or are there boundaries with that? What does all of that look like and what's the expectation on both sides and does that work for everyone? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, my my boyfriend lives in a very interesting um dynamic family dynamic, right? So he lives in a big house and he has like the mother-in-law suite and he has his own bathroom and own living room, but they share the kitchen with the family. Like, so his mom, his sister, his niece and his son. So this is very, I'm like, love having you on here. Right. Because I'm like, <laughs> I could be like the, one of the guinea pig people that you're talking about. Right. Because, because here's the, even a funnier part, right. Is a, uh, my boyfriend is 10 and a half years younger than me and his son is five years old. And so is my granddaughter. <laughs> so it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. But, and though, like when I go into their kitchen, cause I go over there quite a bit. I was over there for five days just now. And, uh, I go in the kitchen then his mom will get me <laughs> and she's LDS. So she's trying to get me to marry him a couple times, you know? And I'm like, no, we could love each other without a piece of paper. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's funny though, too, because the way they, they could come into his, his living domain 
And so I, I told, cause we've been kind of talking about living together eventually. And he, he, he's in a position where he needs to stay there to help his mom yeah. uh, financially. And so he's like, no, we'd have to come here. And I'm just, I told him, I'm like, I'm not in a rush, but I really need to feel like I have privacy. And I work, I mean, this is my office. Like I wouldn't, you know what I mean? I'd be in a yeah. little corner over there, <laughs> yeah, which, yeah, yeah. which, you know, but th- this is all part of it, right? Like conversing about it, like putting your toe, getting your toes wet and like not jumping in, like I'm moving in right now. And then yeah. everything fucking explodes. Like, yeah. you know, cause of the family dynamic. Yeah, exactly. And uh, these are the things that everyone tiptoes around. They don't want to talk about these things. First of all, because especially with women, we don't want to come across as the quote unquote psycho or the crazy person who's assuming we're going to get married right away. It's like, well, no, that's not the case. It's just, I, I don't want to waste time if there isn't potential. If you're someone who you know you want to get married, you know you want to have kids and you're on a two, three dates with someone who does not want those things, what are you doing? Well, what are you doing to yourself? Yeah. I feel like, well, do you feel like a lot of what you teach is for them to look into themselves too? Oh, absolutely. To make sure that you, again, you have those wants and needs so ready to go. You're so aware of them that you know how to recognize them in someone else, but also giving you that confidence to communicate that to someone and be assertive and be able to say, this is what I'm looking for. I don't know that you're that person we've just met, but these are the things I'm looking for. If these aren't things that you're also looking for, we're, we're better off maybe just seeing it for friends. Or yeah, let's be respectful of what it is. Yeah, not wasting because, each other's time. Exactly. So, that was the thing when I would do a lot of readings, and I'm I've been well known for find your lover readings, um, just because I'm good at that. Whatever I don't know. And everyone loves matchmaking, so <laughs> <laughs> like matchmaking <laughs> stuff, right? Uh, is the first thing that spirit wants to focus on is that the person. So the person say comes to me and is like, I want to find your lover reading. Okay, why? Right? Yeah. Why? Because half the time they feel like they're broken. And I'm like, well, then guess what? You ain't going to find the right lover if you're all broken, looking for your other half. Meh, you know, no. to fix you. Yeah. So it's like we got to approach a conscious relationship by being solid with I'm okay with who I am exactly now. I don't need somebody to save me. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And I think a lot of people like overlook that because they're just like, they just want that feeling. I just want to be loved, right? We all just want to be loved. Yeah, and they think that love is going to make them love themselves. They think it's going to solve all their problems. And in reality, all you're going to do is project those problems onto your relationship. And we, the thing is, we all have baggage. We all have things that we bring into a relationship. We all have insecurities. There's no way, we are never fully whole people in the sense of there's never something that we're not healing through and healing from, especially the older we get and the more life experiences we have, right? So we're all still healing through something. And how do you communicate that with your partner? And are you able to heal together? Or is this work that you need to do on your own? And can you do that while you're in a relationship? I see my own therapist as well, separate of my partner. Sometimes I share with him the things that I talk about in therapy. And sometimes those are just between me and my therapist because it's my own journey. And that's okay from things that happened long before I even knew he existed. You know, so you you have to figure out what that balance is. Is Am I good enough to be able to communicate and heal while I'm with this other person? And how much of that needs to be me and how much of that can be a conversation with this person? Yeah, I love that. I love that. Wow. And so then also you help people that are on the rocks, right? That, Yeah. I mean, really everyone, anyone who is on their journey to find love or have love, we can work through that. Whether again, you're single and you're trying to figure out, figure that out and find your person, whether you're starting to date someone and you're not sure how to communicate your wants and needs, whether you're in a new relationship, a long-term relationship, we can always be working on our communication and figuring out how do we tell people what we need? How do we tell them what we just even want? How do we express how they're making us feel and do that in a way that can be on that foundation of trust and safety, because we should always feel safe talking to our partner. A hundred percent. Even if it's something hard. A hundred percent. Yeah. Just sit down. Let's, we got, we, I want to share something with you. Yeah. I'm so grateful for my boyfriend that he listens to me <laughs> for real. Something else I want to ask or share on here <clears throat> that has come up so much for me when people did come to me for the find your lover readings, like they're looking for somebody that's exactly like them. Right. And 
my big, I don't know if I want to say advice or like take a step back for a minute. It's like people, a lot of people think that they're going to find everything in this one person that they want. And I try to share with people like, okay, so, so you like to do yoga and spirituality, right? Like here's a perfect example. I'm into spirituality, right? My boyfriend is not, <laughs> you know what I mean? He uses toxic products, all the stuff. But I find that fulfillment and just even in this conversation with you, this fulfillment of the spirituality realm, or if I go to yoga with one of my neighbors, uh, I don't need my boyfriend to fulfill all of my wants and needs either. Well, it's, you know, it really depends on what, how important those things are to you. So when I have people do their wants and needs, I also have them rate them from a zero to a five, five being, yeah, this is so important that someone matches up for me. Okay. Because lifestyle does matter a little bit. And I will say that was definitely an issue in my marriage where I am a very physically active person. I like to go out and do stuff. I like to take care of my health. I like to eat healthy. The, that's just part of me. My partner did not at all. And that caused a lot of problems too, because then I was giving into his lifestyle and then became very depressed and very anxious and very unhappy in that. And now I have a partner who maybe not to my level, <laughs> likes to do all of the things that I like to do, but we do like to enjoy those things together. And we do like to enjoy eating the same things and doing the same activities. So we're able to do that together and support each other through the things that we also do that are different. Cause he likes to do some physical things that I'm like, I'm not going to do that with you. <laughs> so, yeah. so finding that balance and figuring out what, what level of importance is that to you? How much do you need someone to match that on you? I like that. I like that you said that. Because I guess you're right. It's not just an off and on switch. I'm just thinking of one person in particular that was so upset with her husband that he wouldn't go to yoga with her. And I'm like, okay, well you, like, it was one of those things where she shifted all of a sudden into spirituality and was like, oh my God, I, I found spirituality and I love yoga. And I just feel so great because of all these spiritual things that I'm doing, but he is not coming along for the ride. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So maybe that, that is a want I need that she's just like, no but, or they just couldn't grow together in that direction. Yeah. And but for exactly me, like, I see what you're saying. Like the thing that I really loved about my boyfriend in the beginning is he loves camping and he loves going outdoors. I freaking love all that stuff. Like I, it was like our second date. He asked me to the um, dry lake bed here in Las Vegas. So for like a camping trip, it was like the coldest, windiest day. And it was like horrible, but we had so much fun. And I think that's how we ended up getting bonded. It's like, we're out and I just love nature. So yeah. Yeah. But he does eat the toxic ass crap, uses the toxic <laughs> products. You know, I'm smelling him. I'm like, I think I'm picking up chemicals from over there. You know what I mean? But yeah. at the same time, like, I never thought I would be with a man with a, a little. I was, I'm done. My daughter's 28. You know what I mean? But all of a sudden here I am. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I don't know. It's like, I don't think that we can put it so harshly in a box because then yeah. maybe sometimes we miss out on something you know yeah, we I don't know what will we just happen have to gauge like what we're what we're able to work with and what really matters to us you know there's there's things that are definite that if they don't line up they're not going to work yoga and lifestyle there's some fluidity to that right how much do you need someone to be able to do stuff with you how much of their interest is it just a willingness to come and participate with you or do you need them to be fully in, immersed in the culture and the the cult of it you know, so to speak, as you are. So really figuring out what that balance is for you. But then something like marriage and kids, if you for sure want to get married and you for sure want to have kids and your partner doesn't or isn't sure, that's not going to work then. Right. Because at some point, someone's going to give in on, on either side and that's going to lead to a bigger issue. So yeah. some of them, yeah, a little bit more fluid. Sex can even be a little bit more fluid. You need sex four times a week. Maybe it's, okay, I don't know that I can do four times a week, but three times a week. And then maybe we fool around, or maybe we engage in some sort of other sexual intimacy that isn't quite that or whatever the balance is. Um, but some of those things, those more lifestyle things can be shifted a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I think it is important to be a little bit open too, because what if you had an experience? Cause I think our higher selves, you know, probably knows what it is that we want. And like, maybe, cause I didn't, I didn't think I wanted a little, you know what I mean? In my life again, but, um, now it's like so fun. <laughs> so if I would have just said, no, Oh, you have a kid by, you know what I mean? So yeah. I don't yeah. know. 
Yeah. But again, that kind of shifting of like, okay, that's very different than your partner coming in and like, okay, I want us to have a baby. And you're like, no, 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 I'm done doing that. You know? So like there's- that would be level five for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's really figuring out where, where, where are you at and what are the gives? And I ask people to really visualize what that looks like too. When you visualize getting married, what does that look like? Are you expecting a big wedding? Are you expecting to get married in the next few years? Are you, do you have a timeline on when you think you should get married in a relationship? Things like that. If that doesn't align with the other person, that could cause a really big issue. That could, again, lead to that manipulation and that resentment that we start to build when we try to get someone to do what we want them to do. Yeah, I feel like, so in your belly, as soon as you feel that resistance, you know, it's like, oh, sit with it and find out well, what is, what is the trigger here? Because that needs to come out or else it's going to yeah. just build on, build on, build on, right? Like you say, and then the, then it's just like a push and a pull. It's like, you're like little kids pulling each other's braids again, you know, if you're not communicating properly or expressing what, what, what your feelings are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's crazy wild. So how long have you been with your partner now? Um, going on, coming up on a couple of years, two years. So nice summer. Yeah. Fun. Is it fun? Is your honeymoon phase over? I'm all damn. No, not at all. We just, you know, we definitely had that immediate spark and that connection that I, I kid you not. I felt him when I walked in the room before I saw him level of connection. Um, but we just really committed from the very beginning to communicating well with each other. We both divorcees, both having gone through enough life circumstances, enough losses. We just decided to be very honest with each other and practice that radical honesty and radical vulnerability. And we had those hard conversations in the beginning so that we could make sure that we were on the same page and we continue to have those hard conversations. We continue to check in with each other. We continue to let each other know exactly how we feel. Um, and that, that helps us, that helps us maintain. I like that you said radical honesty and vulnerable, vulnerable. that word is so hard for me to say. Vulnerability. It's a Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Oh my gosh. So you are in Las Vegas, right? I am. I am. I'm actually, I live in hundred, live and work in Henderson. Oh, me too. Um, yeah. I think, yeah. I think we were, we established we were kind of close to each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but where could people find you? Because you know, my audience is like all over the place. Yeah. So again, I, I work mostly online. I am looking into starting to do workshops and I did one actually a couple of Sundays ago through, um, sunny day, Las Vegas, which was really fun. Um, so I'm looking to start doing some live kind of group workshop, these sorts of things, but as far as individual coaching or therapy, um, they can find me at my website, smewellness.com. I'm also on Instagram at smewellness. I have a Facebook, which I'm not as active on, but I try to be, um, but they can reach out to me at any of those ways that they want to. Okay. So SME is S M E E you guys, smewellness.com. Yep, and like we'll put all that in the show notes too. So you guys can click on her link and find her. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is such an amazing conversation, right? Yeah, I love it. I love your energy so much. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I love your, your alien energy too. You're, so <laughs> You're going to have to go look up Palladians now. I'm find going out to. Because <laughs> that's about the gist of all I know. But it's, but it's like Starcy. So you like, you know, you came here to make a shift. We all kind of did, right? But um. What is it called when they're like inactive players inside the video games? There's like a name for it. Well, I don't know. I'm Some, not deep enough into game culture know, but, to have the lingo down. <laughs> but we're like, you know, we're like the active players in the video game. So we're the more conscious and, you know, no, no, no disrespect to anybody else, but it's like, we're the ones that are came here to like make this change. And so that's why people love your energy, right? They're like, <laughs> They're like, hey, I want to vibe like that. So yeah, stuff up. <laughs> I love it. I can't thank you enough for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I was really excited and honored that we were able to do this. 